Hey, welcome to Backwoods Gourmet. Today we're going to do a video by request. People have been requesting for a couple years now on how to make this windscreen that we use behind our cookers. That's coming at you right now. <music> So today's project is a, a windscreen, which has multiple, multiple uses. I use it for all kinds of stuff. I take it outside when the wind's blowing on my smokers. I uh, use it in here in the studio, obviously, all the time. Uh, on my uh, double burner propane stove, your camp table, your uh, Dutch oven table. Uh, you could use it multiple different ways for cooking and I'm sure, you know, camping, things like that. If you want to pack so it along. So to make today's project, the first thing you're going to need is this 4 by 8 sheet. This is cellular PVC panel. Now you can obviously make this out of plywood like our original one was. Uh, we're gonna use this because this is waterproof and it's gonna last forever. Now if you don't, if you can't find this, we got this one at Home Depot. It was about 68 bucks. Okay, full four by eight sheet. If you can't find that, I, my second choice would be marine plywood. The next thing we're going to need is going to need a straight edge. And here's two, two alternatives. Uh, there's just a straight piece of lumber. And then here I have my uh, Swanson skill saw guide. And this is going to help us cut a nice straight line. Now, you obviously do not have to have that either. If you're good with your saw and you can cut reasonably straight, you don't have to have that. And of course, these clamps are going to be for clamping it down. Next thing is I have a power driver, power drill. Obviously, you could use a screwdriver, a hand drill. If you don't have those, it's just going to make it go quicker and faster. Tape measure. And then uh, over here, we have a skill saw. And if you'll notice, uh, it has a very fine tooth blade on it. Okay, which is great for doing plywood or especially these PVC sheet guts. And last but not least, we have uh, some, we have six door hinges. These are just ones I had left over from a, a previous project. Could use used ones doesn't matter and uh, enough screws to install all those the last thing you're going to need a pencil and i'm going to use a little block plane but you could use a sanding block also this is going to be faster if you got one all right so to set up these guides one of the things we need to know is how far it is from the edge of our saw our saw uh, table here to the side of the blade exactly and this one all pretty much is always one and a half inches so we have to remember that we're going to have to set our guide forward one and a half inches from where we want to cut. I'll show you that next. Because so since we want to cut this sheet of plywood into three equal sections, we found our 32 inch mark. That's going to be three equal sections on an eight foot piece of plywood. And we're going to add an inch and a half. So that's going to be 33 and a half. We're going to mark that on both edges and then we'll lay our guide on and clamp it down. So what I'm going to do here is I got a couple pieces of scrap out of the shop and I'm just going to know that I know where, I, where my cut's going to be. I'm going to, I'm going to bridge that, let the plywood bridge these two pieces so that I don't, uh, I got some actually nice lumber up under there I don't want to cut. So I'm going to put those sacrificial pieces, if those get cut that's no big deal. But I, I have some finished grade lumber in there. If you've got some old sacrificial 2 before's under there, just set your blade depth. And we're going to do that right now where it cuts through, but, you know, not too far. So we're going to jack it up till it goes through. It's going to flex a little bit, so I want to go through about a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to lock it What we're going to do is just going to keep our edge of our, our uh, frame for our saw, keep my tape measure, right against that fence and we're going to smoothly cut across. Now we won't be able to reach all the way across so we're going to have to go to the other side to finish the cut. I held that in place until the blade completely stopped. Now let me unhook my mic and So 
So as you can see, that was a perfectly straight and smooth cut on our first piece. Uh, set up again, we only have one more cut. And we're done with the cutting. So this time, we set it up just using a nice piece of lumber with a nice straight edge on it instead of the Swanson jig. So if you don't have that Swanson jig, this, was how, this would be how you do it. If you don't have that jig, it works just as easily. Finish it up on the other side. So there you have three equally cut sections of your panel. Now, like I said, this could be plywood. Um, we're using the plastic, it'll last forever. So I've equally laid out my hinges. I started four inches from the bottom, four inches from the top, and then centered this, the center one. Now I'm just going to, uh, actually I'm gonna take this one off and pull that sticker off because I can't get to the hole. I'll just punch it out. Some of these stickers, they just get crazy with at the stores these days. Alright, the big thing is you want this gap to be just a little bigger than the barrel. And this is the barrel of the hinge. Just a little bigger than that. Now we're going to mark all the holes. Okay, now that those are marked, I'm going to remove my hinge, and this is important. I'm going to mark both sides of this panel. FR for front right. Okay, I really only need to do that in one location. Because we still have a little work to do to the panel before we can install the hinges. But what we're going to do first is, I'm going to go ahead and drill pilot holes in each, in the center of each one. Now since we're using three quarter screws, we're going to drill that all the way through and we're going to have to file or grind the tips of the screw because I don't have any half inch screws at the moment. But if, you have, if you're going to buy stuff, get half inch screws and you won't have to deal with the tips. So we're going to drill all three hinges, pilot holes, and then we'll, I'll show you how to work on the panel itself. So before we start assembling it and putting the hinges on, we just want to take our little block plane and we're just going to knock a little chamfer on the edge there that just knocks that sharp edge off it. We'll do it on the corners too. Uh, both sides, okay? Maybe it's easier to flip it over. But we're just running a little curl right off of that edge. It's going to give you a nice finished look. Well, guys, it is hot out here this morning. I wanted you to pay attention to this particular step of the process because this is important. And you'll see the importance of marking that first hinge set at the bottom as front right, as the front right panel if we're going to be looking at it assembled. All right, so what we did is we moved those two panels, we flipped them over and moved them down here to this end. And you see I marked it, that's the right rear of the right panel, right there. I put it RR. So we want that to be up when we lay out the second set of hinges. So this will fold like an accordion. So we got them ready to go. We'll just mark them out and do them exactly the same way as we did the other set. All right, so we got those pre-drilled, our pilot holes, everything lined up there. We're gonna go ahead and uh, start putting our screws in. Now I like to put my center one in first just to help uh, get everything lined up. And obviously you could use a screwdriver for this. And some of you carpenters out there, I know, I know you're out there, are asking me right now why we're not mortising these hinges in so they lay perfectly flat. Well, the reason why is, is this is only half inch material. Okay, if I mortise them in, it's not going to give me a whole lot of meat to bite on. So, I uh, built these before, you know, the one we have right now, uh, surface mount, it works perfect. Um, if you want to mortise yours and you got the jig to do it with a router, uh, feel free to go ahead and do that. But you know, um, the more of this you take away, the less bite you're going to get with your screws. So we'll put just one screw and the other two, and then we'll come back and fill them in.
Now all three screws are in, or hinges are installed. Let's go ahead and make sure it closes perfectly. And I told you they were going to be sticking up a bit. So we'll get to that um, in the next step. What we're going to do right now is going to flip this over. We're going to install the other side. So you can see now that we have flipped over, now our marks are realigned. Now we go ahead and install these three hinges. We can grind the tips of those screws off and this will be almost ready to use. So this product has multiple uses. Uh, I use it here in the studio. Uh, you guys see it almost every video uh, back here behind the cookers, uh, Dutch oven table, whatever you're using. It is reasonably portable, weighs uh, about 15 pounds when finished. Uh, you can pack that up, take it with you camping, use it out at your uh, camp for your Dutch oven tables, your smoker, grill, whatever you got set up. So this is a really, really valuable product when you're outdoor cooking. Hey, thanks for watching the Backwoods Gourmet. If you like what we're doing, please hit that like button right down there. If you'd like to subscribe to our channel, you can do it right there. Hey, and don't forget to ring your bell and turn on your notifications for another great Backwoods Gourmet video. It's going to be right there. And for a whole playlist of outdoor-related how-to videos, it's going to be right up there. We'll see you next time.